Hello and welcome to the Young Orthopod and today we'll be discussing about the flow reaction orthosis. The flow reaction orthosis is a simple orthosis that is often asked in the clinical assessment exams and as a short note question. It is important to understand the basic mechanism of how an FRO works while prescribing it in the clinics. Today we'll try to find out the answers to few of these questions. In this video you will learn what exactly is a flow reaction orthosis its clinical indications the principle behind fro prerequisites for its use advantages and disadvantages of a flow reaction orthosis way back in 1969 dr jimmy saltiel from israel invented the fro he described an ankle foot orthosis which was designed to stabilize the paralyzed limb without limiting the knee movement the fro consists of mainly three parts a foot plate two uprights on the sides and a knee piece on the top these three parts form the standard modular flow reaction orthosis the flow reaction orthosis is commonly prescribed for children with cerebral palsy who walk with a crouch gait which is characterized by excessive ankle dorsiflexion increased knee flexion and increased hip flexion in the mid stance it is also used in the lower limb paralysis with weak quadriceps like in the cases of post polio residual paralysis so before we go into the principle and mechanism of the flow reaction orthosis let's brush up the normal gait cycle once during one gait cycle each extremity passes through two major phases a stance phase and a swing phase a stance phase is when some part of the foot is in contact with the floor which makes up about 60% of the gait cycle and a swing phase is when the foot is not in contact with the floor which makes up the remaining 40% stance phase consists of four parts the loading response mid stance terminal stance and the pre swing phase flow reaction orthosis is a stance phase control orthosis one must remember that during the stance phase of the gait cycle it is important to maintain the erect posture by preventing flexion of hip and the knee joint and to achieve this the ground reaction force must pass anterior to the ankle and knee joint and posterior to the hip joint to counteract the respective joint movements So let's see what is happening during the early stance phase where the FRO will act. After the initial contact, the ground reaction force increases rapidly in magnitude and its direction being upwards and backwards. From its nearly fully extended position at the initial contact, the knee now flexes during the loading response, initiating the stance phase flexion. This is accompanied by eccentric contraction of the quadriceps to limit the speed and magnitude of the flexion hence it prevents the buckling of the knee joint during the mid stance the hip continues to extend moving from a flexed attitude to an extended one the knee starts to extend now initially through concentric contraction of the quadriceps muscles by now we know that gradual eccentric contraction of the quadriceps is needed to prevent knee from buckling during the stance phase so to compensate for the paralyzed quadriceps function the patient can do few things so as to stabilize the knee joint number 1 he can hyperextend the knee to lock the joint and he will bend the trunk forward to bring the weight bearing axis and the center of gravity in front of the knee joint and he will stabilize the thigh with the hand to summarize in a patient with paralyzed quadriceps during the early stance phase there will be buckling of the knee joint the flow reaction orthosis holds the ankle in equinus of about 5 to 8 degrees to prevent the heel from touching the ground so during the initial contact there will be four foot strike instead of heel strike and this passes the weight bearing axis further anterior to the joint axis 
during the loading response and mid stance as the body weight brings the heel downwards a horizontal component of the ground traction force is transmitted along the two uprights or the lateral pillars of the orthotic device and causes suprapatellar band to press the knee back preventing the knee from buckling during the stance phase the prerequisites for the use of floor reaction orthosis includes absence of knee or hip joint flexion contracture exceeding 10 degrees there should be presence of some trunk balance or the ability to use auxiliary walking aids in the event of diminished trunk balance and a minimum grade 3 quadriceps strength thus the patient's clinical picture is more important than the actual diagnosis in determining whether or not to prescribe this particular orthotic design the weight of an fro is much less than that of a conventional knee ankle foot orthosis hence the swing phase is not labored and ground clearance is easier the major advantage of the floor reaction orthosis is that besides stabilizing the ankle and subtalar joints it helps prevent the knee joint from buckling by assisting the knee extension capabilities of quadriceps femoris muscles also the patient feels reasonably secure the fro gives him a sense of freedom and control over external devices this device is molded to provide total contact thus preventing pressure sores over bony prominences it is more comfortable for patients more cosmetically appealing than their old orthoses and can fit into regular shoe under normal trousers it is cleaned easily with mild soap and water and has no movable parts which would require any maintenance the drawbacks of fro includes the materials are relatively expensive it has to be custom made and must be of correct fitting or else it won't function correctly the upper end of this orthosis projects anteriorly when the knee flexes and thus gives abnormal appearance so this was all about floor reaction orthosis if you like this video please subscribe to my channel the young orthopod don't forget to like comment and share this video For more topics in orthopedics please like my page the young orthopod on facebook and you can also visit my blog young orthopod at blogspot the link is in the description thank you for watching see you soon